And I spake all these words, saying, I'm the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the image. Thou shalt know the gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day the Sabbath for the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. In the name of Christ we give thanks. Amen. 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 Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ornament upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 This is Matthew 6. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debt, we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In Christ's name we all pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Two great commandments. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hail Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. In Christ's name we all pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 All right. All right, happy Sabbath and new moon, Israel. I like, all right, so we'll go over a few scriptures so that we uh, can fellowship and eat the new moon feast and enjoy each other's company, right? So let's get into a quick topic or this quick topic pertaining to let thanks and praise go before our Lord. Let's read about it. Start at Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we'll start at Psalm 136. So this Psalm 136, I, I'll start off. So it say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. O oh, give thanks unto the, the God of gods, for his mercy endure forever. So this, the psalm here is exhorting all of us to thank the one and true living God, the most high, the God of Israel. We'd always thank the most high in the name of Christ for the things which he has done for us, done for our nation. You see what I'm saying? How he's blessed us with wisdom knowledge and understanding. We would have thanked the Most High because of his benefits he has showed to our nation. Okay, so hold this here. Let's back up a chapter. Psalm 135. We'll come back. Psalm 135 and 1, it say, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him. Oh, ye servants of the Lord. So it's telling us 
the servants of the Most High, which is that elect of Israel, what are they going to do? They're going to praise the Lord their God, right? This is a commandment, Israel. We to praise and thank the Father. This is a commandment right here. It's not an option. If we're going to be the servants of the Most High in Christ, let us praise the Most High in Christ and thank Him. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord. So we don't have a temple no more. But we make up the church, the body of Christ. So we got to understand that. And if we truly understand that, again, we're going to praise the Most High. The only one and true living God. There is no other gods. But false gods, right? And so y'all see how this so-called European, he thanks the devil even openly. They, he come with a so-called holiday feast they call Thanksgiving. So he openly give thanks to the devil. Now the most high is over the devil. The most high Christ is over the devil. But if the heathen give praise and thanks to the devil, what are we supposed to be doing? Praise the heavenly father. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what. No matter what. Like Paul said, you know, we to thank God in all things. This is the will of the most high concerning thee. Believe it, that's in First Thessalonians. Five. So let's read. It said, Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Now, now we dig it in as far as who we are. We are the true Israelites. We're the Lord's chosen. When they talk about how Israel is his peculiar treasure, meaning you're special to the Lord. We'll say it again. You're special to the Lord. Should we thank him? Yes. Because you chose a nation. <laughs> we could have been Hamites and Edomites and everything else. Then what? Uh, see? Let's say, wait a minute. This is why we praise and thank the Most High. Because look, we the chosen nation above all nations. And the nations on this earth want to be you. They want to be you. You see? <laughs> but it's impossible. Okay? It's impossible. Let's go back to Psalm 136. Let's remember this, Israel. Psalm 136 and 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endure forever. So remember how Psalm 135 said, listen, that we are the true Israelites. We that chosen nation, special nation to the most high in Christ. So even though we're in captivity, we still his people. And one day through Christ, we're going to be delivered and rule over all nations again on the face of the earth. You understand? And so the righteous knew to always give thanks unto the Lord and praise. Hold this here. Go to Ezra. Ezra, the third chapter. Ezra, the third chapter. So we'll read how Ezra was a, he was a Levite, an Israelite who studied the scriptures. He was skilled in the scriptures and he taught Israel the scriptures. You understand? And he preached the resurrection to Israel. That's right. 
So this is Ezra 3 and 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple, so this one we came out of the Babylonian captivity, which lasted for 70 years. So at this time, we were under the, the, the Medo Persian Empire, the Persian and Mede Empire. So the Lord allowed us to come build the temple again because Solomon's temple got destroyed by the Babylonians and the Edomites. So the Lord used Cyrus to allow us to come build. And he had certain nations try to jump in there and say, hey, we, we want to help y'all build the temple. And that's when I'm like, get out of here. We build it by ourselves. So we build it together. And at this point, only the foundation of the temple was laid. So let's read it again. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets. See, so the priests had nice garments on with trumpets, silver trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang what? Together. See, we will see how we were together. They sang together by course in praising and what? Giving thanks. Giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good for his mercy endure forever toward who? Israel. Israel. So see how the Psalm 136, Psalm 130 is, is connected. See how the righteous, they was giving praise and thanks to the Lord. He allowed us to come out of the Babylonian captivity. Even though we were still in captivity, he allowed us to build and work together. What about today? We got the right attitude serving the same God. We're going to praise him together, give thanks, be appreciative, enjoy one another, love one another. All that's going to come into play because you're praising and thanking the living God through the Christ. You see that, Israel? So if the Most High Christ didn't want us to praise and thank him, these scriptures wouldn't be in here that we're going to go over today. These are called commandments. <laughs> right? So it said, because he is good and for his mercy endure forever toward Israel. So you see why the nations can't destroy our whole nation? Why not? It's the mercy of the Lord. See how Haman's plot wouldn't be able to work? When they, when Haman all went, wanted to come to try to destroy the whole nation of Israel, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna work. So when you, you read about Isaiah 14 and 1, what did it say? Y'all know what it says. Huh? So that prophecy, Isaiah 14 and 1 through 3, is still pending. What does it say, Bequasha? It said, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. See that? Mm. Go ahead. And set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's right. So that's showing you the Lord's promises can't be broken. So praise ye the Lord. So when you hear scriptures like that, Israel, why would we frown up on them? That, that show you now somebody serving another God. That's why the Most High told our nation, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Once we start conforming and going after other gods, then we get mushy and start acting like the nations. You see, with God's words become now offensive. We would, we would go with what God said. <laughs> right? Right. So we'll read Ezra, all praises, 3, 3rd chapter, 11 verse again. It said, And they sang together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good, for his mercy endure forever. These are the highlights. Forever. 
toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. So we're showing you, we're like, the foundation is laid because we got the temple we can worship. You understand? We've seen the Lord working with us. That's why we have what we have to see today. The Lord working with our nation. He's doing great and wondrous things with our nation. You understand? He, he, he gave us men like Peter, James, John, Paul. The Christ. All these Israelites. Who was special unto the Most High. You understand? So let's go back. All praises. So this is Psalm 136. In three. Psalm 136 in three. It said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endure forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. See, the most high is the source of great wonders, not false gods. That's what it's saying. Not false gods. Because false gods, that's just what they are. False and dead gods. Say, for his mercy endure forever. Said to him, verse 5, to him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy endure forever. So you look at the heavens. Look at creation. Who's behind it? The most high in Christ. The Lord used wisdom to create the heavens. So there's no Big Bang theory. You see? So this so-called European come with the Big Bang theory. He's again praising the devil. His God, the God called chaos. That's the devil. Another name for the devil. Because you get a Big Bang, an explosion. It's just all, things are all over the place. You understand? So this so-called European got different names for the devil. You see? That's right. Baphomet, chaos. That's right. So the Baphomet, you know, it's got a male private part. Breasts. That, that, that's where you get the transgender movement. So you see the transgender, they're saying, look at the devil. They want that because that's, that's what they, they into satanic worship. You see? And the Lord got their ticket. So as much as they saying they love the earth, they hate the earth. Right? That's what the scriptures say. In Revelation, the nations, want, they're destroying the earth. The Lord going to deal with them. They want to pollute the water and, and the air and all this. Listen, the Lord created the heavens, the atmosphere through the Christ. The Lord not to manipulate the elements. It's Esau and so the so-called European come with, let me, let me mess up with the elements and all that. Remember, Christ can change. He didn't change water into wine. As much as they messing with stuff, <laughs> you can't beat the Lord, man. And he's our God. He's our God. So the Lord by wisdom made the heavens. Verse 6 says, To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endure forever. To him that made great lights, plural. What are these powerful lights is going to tell us? For his mercy endure forever. The sun to rule by day. So you check out the sun. How powerful is the sun? Very powerful. It's a light within itself. And the sun's job is to rule what? The day. The day. This so-called European worships the sun. He's a sun worshiper. And he'll have the people... Go to church or whatever on Sunday, mm. called Sunday worship. 
A lot of our people don't believe that, but that's what he's into. Sun worship. They say that the earth go around the sun. That's another lie. When in actuality, we see sunrise and sundown. So what is moving? The sun. <laughs> now how we get tricked? See? Because the devil. <laughs> but upon further review, when we read the scriptures, the Lord tells us that he got the sun going around the planet earth, the earth. And some of our people can read it and still say, uh-uh. Nah. But it's in the scripture. What is, uh-uh, nah. See, that's, that's that witchcraft on the mind. See? <laughs> they'll see it and say, nope, that ain't it. <laughs> so the sun is there to rule by day for his mercy endure forever. The what? Moon and stars. The, the moon and stars. Those other lights. So the moon has this separate light. The moon don't get its light from the sun. The Lord didn't say that. Right. It just said lights, plural. <laughs> All our lights. We see that with our own two eyes, Israel. Now NASA in on the trick. They'll tell you that the moon is like a crater rock where man can jump on it. <laughs> Would the Lord tell us that the moon looks like a crater rock? Tricked again. Lord created the moon where man can jump on there with a suit and then put a flag on there with pentagrams and all that. The Baphomet symbol. Now you see why NASA, they'll name their shuttles after false gods. You think they just doing that on purpose? Or are we by accident? By design. It's by design. Because the devil be in operation. Just like that 9-11. They destroyed a lot of people. And then they played it like, oh, it's... Osama bin Laden. Uh, they, they hijacked a plane with box cutters. <laughs> Eight people. Come on, man. Box cutters. Hold on. The United States of America have the they they they, they military security is one of the great the greatest military security. So you think you think they if you got planes. Hijackers are all that day. They go just let that plane go into buildings. Only if you wicked. Remember the, the pilots, all them, the flight attendants, all they think is military. Y'all know that, right? That's why they use codes like Alpha, such and such. The pilots be yeah, coming from the military. They already study for hijackers. When planes crash, how to, how to, what procedures they got to go through. Ain't no flight attendant supposed to get on the cell phone. <laughs> First of all, if you up so high, how can you use a cell phone? <laughs> see the trick back? You see? It's a scam, Israel. It's a scam. Because you got the devil giving them they marching orders, saying do this, do that. Do. And guess what happened after 9-11? How TSA and all them pop up. Now you got to go to the airport and then the thing can read all, your whole body and all. Look what took place after that. Put radiation on your body too with that thing. See? So that this so-called European always has an agenda and it's to destroy you. It's what's the next plot and scam. See? But thank the most high in Christ, we got them on our side. Because mm. yeah. right. Esau ain't going to stop with his plots and plans and agendas, Israel. He's about war and murder. 9 11 means murder. Mm. But you know, man, they got systems in them planes where they could control it without the pilot. Mm -hmm. 
They can make a plane move itself and fly. They'll fly the plane to a certain destination without, without the pilot. So if a terrorist try to take over, they can still manipulate. They don't need the pilot. And that's why they'll come out with the test. Of, oh, now we can move a car and make it drive on its own. They've been doing this stuff. So they play games. <clears throat> and without us having the wisdom, the true wisdom of the Most High in Christ, we're going to get caught up. <laughs> right? So we're reading about the moon right there. Here's a light that can change phases. It can go from a full moon to a new moon. And we all read it in the scriptures. Full moon, that's in the scriptures. And new moon, that's in the scriptures. So how the full moon going to be the new moon? That's a false prophet that teach that. But sugar nugget. You see? And then use the so-called European Yiddish and go into Psalms 81, 1 through 3, and then say, as it was appointed, let's look at the Hebrew. Kodesh. See, Kodesh means full moon. See, what Hebrew are you talking about? So we in the new moon today, all praises. So you see why we was going here? Because it would lead us to, to talk about what, Israel? See? And we establish we the Lord's people. We to thank them. Here the new moon. Sabbath. All praises, man. Lord bringing us together. He has a plan. <laughs> so let's read this again. Thank the one who what? Made the moon and the stars to rule the night. So that moon and the stars, they the rule the nighttime. So let's go back to creation. So remember, it would be the Lord's will we get into the class on how we count days. So we know about the death of Christ. <laughs> you understand? It said, for his mercy endure forever. I praise us. So now let's go to Colossians. So what was the first high holy day given unto us? I just show of hands. Trey. Exactly. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. Total agreement. All right. So remember the moon was created on what day? <coughs> fourth day. The fourth day. The Sabbath was instituted on the seventh day. So how's the moon going to dictate the Sabbath? It was created on the fourth day. How's the full moon, because it was created as a light, going to be a, 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 a new moon? <laughs> when the first high holy day was given to us was what? Sabbath. The Sabbath day. Which is a commandment of God. So how you got this, uh, people believe in it? Oh, this, the Sabbath started with Moses, did it? No, no. Moses wrote Exodus, and he brought out the account how the Most High spoke to our nation and spoke about the Sabbath day, how it was, it was in creation the seventh day. See how we just keep it basic? We'll be safe. Understand? Most High gave us the Sabbath day in Exodus 20. Read it. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. We go to Genesis. You go to Exodus 16. The Lord said, I'm going to prove Israel by my law. What happened in Exodus 16 regarding the Sabbath? Didn't the Lord tell us how to prepare for the Sabbath? In Exodus 6, he said, uh, in six days, I'm going to give you twice as much. <laughs> and on the Sabbath, you ain't supposed to go out and gather the manna. Because it ain't going to be there. That's in Exodus 16. And so on that sixth day, he gave us twice as much manna. 
Seventh day was the Sabbath. And then how was we to keep count? The Sabbath. Um, According to the lunar moon? What, what are we talking about? <laughs> Because we was in the we was in the wilderness for forty years. Yeah, we had to eat manna. Correct. See, yeah. so it'd be week sa Sabbaths, right? Correct. Weekly Sabbaths. Had to. Because yeah. right? we couldn't go. Oh, you know, let's make a Sabbath. We couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we just bringing these points because the devil be tricky. Mm -hmm. But if you stay basic. You good. Adam Eve, they just needed to stay basic. He didn't. <clears throat> you see? So we said in Colossians. So there's some things to meditate on here to think about. This is Colossians, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1 and 1. Say, Paul. There's an Israelite right here from the tribe of Benjamin. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And Timothy is our brother. So this brother here, Paul was once on the dark side. But the Lord brought him into the body of Christ. And guess how he felt? Let's get that. Hold this here. Let's get to one in Timothy. First Timothy. And remember, the spirit he had, we to have. First Timothy 1 and 12. So this is Paul writing to this letter to Timothy. He said, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who have enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. <clears throat> so how did Paul feel when he was brought into Christ? Yeah, how would I? He was grateful. See, grateful, thankful. thankful. It's a special thing we being put in what? The ministry. This is a ministry. This is the church. That's right. Look at him. What he said. Who was before. Now you're talking about his old man. A blasphemer and a persecutor. And injurious. Remember when you read about Paul, old life, he would be attacking the church. He had hate for Christ. He had hate for the saints. That's the dark side. Are we supposed to have hate for one another, attack the church? No. No, no that's Satan. Look for the church to be destroyed and blame. Oh, we ain't supposed to be like that. So Paul was once like that, blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious. He said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So now Paul talking about the mercies of God. <laughs> Paul was a chosen vessel. The Lord brought him in. He was a changed man because the Most High in Christ changed lives in Israel. Understand that. But then he says in 2 Timothy, check it out. 2 Timothy 3. You have this going in some of the churches of Christ. You have some of this going down. This 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Say, this know also, so this is what he's telling Timothy, an elder, that in the last days, which we're in, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. So how would you have brothers and sisters in the church in the last days, in the churches of Christ? Self-centered. 
That's what this world promote us to be self-centered. And this world have a heavy influence on it, where it can influence us to be self-centered. Covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Checking that out. What else does it say? Unthankful. Unthankful and unholy. So we don't want to get ourselves on this list. So that's why we go on over the class and topic on how we to be thankful that thanks and praise go before our Lord. You see? It's a spirit, Israel. That's right. So now let's go back to Colossians 1. You see? Children, that have parents in the Lord, man, be thankful. Lord, bringing us together, build friendships, be thankful. You find a friend in the Lord, Israel, you found a treasure. Ain't that what the scriptures say? Yes, sir. <laughs> See? If we stay thankful and appreciative, we ain't going nowhere. Well, the minute we start losing sight of things, we become unthankful, ingrates, forgetful of good turns. That goes into idolatry. See? So this is Colossians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, our praises, and Timothy is our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren. You see? So we too to be that faithful brother, faithful sisters to the most high in Christ. Well, we stand strong. And we respect the head of the church. Who's the head? Who has the church? Christ. 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 So we respect the head of the church, the body of Christ, then how are we gonna treat the members? Same way. See? It ain't just, can I come to church and do what? Be a problem? <laughs> Remember who heads the church. <laughs> so you don't disrespect the head, you're going to come at the members. That's out of order. Right? It says, to the saints and faithful brother in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father, mm. check it out, of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. praying always for you. So what is Paul telling the church? Who would he pray to? Christ. God the Father. God the Father in the name of Christ. Because Christ told us who to go to in prayer. The Father. And you see the brother and they would pray for each other. Pray for the church. You see? They was for the church. Talking about Paul, Timothy. You see, they were for the church. The Lord had them set up to feed the church. Showing that brotherly kindness. It ain't easy to feed the church. You have to have a spirit to feed the church. And that comes from above. So jump over to verse 12, Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father. There it go again. So you're checking out the word thanks. Which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his, what? Dear, dear, son. dear son. So who is Christ to the most high? His dear, dear son. What did the Lord do for the believers? What did he do for us? What is Paul saying? What did it mean who have translated us? What happened? You see, Charles. 
what happened was we were delivered from darkness into our light, coming into Christ. That's what the Father did for Israel. What Israel are you talking about? Huh? What Israel are you talking about? You talking about what Israel you yeah. talking about? Twelve tribes, but twelve tribes. Yeah. But we talking about the elect. Dealing with the saints. Right. The elect of God. So, right. Being translated from that darkness to that light. So bring it. So you right, Brother Charles. So bring it to us. What did the Lord do for us? Because we're part oh, of that Israel. Yeah. What did what he do? Yeah. What's the translation for us? <laughs> well, same translation. He brought us out that world. Woo. Where we were worshiping Christmas, <laughs> Easter, Woo. birthday. The Lord, you know, brought us out that world and brought us here to uh, in the church. See? That's the Lord's working through the Christ. You, Paul is breaking it down for us. See what we to be thankful for? Because we still can be in darkness, cutting up, not knowing nothing. Right? So we have to be thankful for what the Lord has done. Look at what the places we have came from. But it was a spirit of power that moved us. And start showing us things in this Bible that we didn't really see before. <laughs> see how we got to be thankful. Y'all got the translation? Because we was under the power of darkness. The devil being satanic. So now we don't want to entertain the devil. Now we got to grow in Christ. That's why Paul now say once we in Christ, he taught put off the old man and continue to put on the new. Now we have to walk a newness in a newness of life now. Ephesians 2, we say how we, we got quickened. We was once following the course of this world. That's Ephesians 2, right? So then Ephesians 4 and 17 say, now henceforth, don't follow like the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. And we're to put off that old man, the bitterness. You understand? The anger. The wrath. The fornication. See? So we've been exhorted to good works. And those are classes you go into about the new man, right? The old man. That's right. <laughs> so we have work to do. It's really, oh, I'm in the church and we sat. Nah, it's work to do. It's a life now we have to live. Just can't be, oh, I'm in the church. Yeah, and you're out there worldly and just acting a fool. We're supposed to let our light shine before men. they supposed to see a change. Right? Right. So now that's Colossians 1, 1 through 3. We went to 12, the 12th 12 verse, 13th verse. Let's get the third chapter in Colossians 3 and 15. Colossians 3 and 15. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one camp. So we've been called to be in one body. That's the church. So what Paul say? And be ye thankful. See? And be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. So obviously for us to get in these scriptures here, the Lord want them to come out because it's in his Bible. <laughs> So we got to look back and say, have we been actually praising the Lord and been thanking him like we should? Or do we just go through the formalities and it's just like, well, you know, it is what it is. I've been hitting, it's, it's more to it than that. The scriptures like these, Israel put us in the right mind state, mind frame. 
See what I'm saying? Because the most high in Christ, they big on thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation. They big on that. No, they not. Yes, they are. Paul wouldn't be saying it through the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Luke 17. So I'll be seeing brothers put out that Psalm 103, powerful scripture. That Psalm 103 go with these scriptures also. <laughs> Be thankful, man. The Lord blessing us. We'll be in adverse situations, but the Lord give us the mind to be able to deal with it. Different things go down in our life. People come, loved ones come, they go, everything. But the Lord got wisdom in that for us to learn how to process things. That's why we need the wisdom. Whereas the world, when things hit, <laughs> it jacks them up. It jacks them up. <laughs> they don't even know what's going on. Lord help us deal in situations. All praises. That's why we got the scriptures. It says Luke 17. Luke 17 and 7. Christ shall say a parable here to the disciples. Say, but which of you, his disciples, having a servant plowing, or feeding cattle. So what do servants do for their master? Plow. plow they feed. plow that field, and they feed cattle. <laughs> now flip it with the strangers in the kingdom. When they be servants and handmaids, what are they going to do? Plow, and feed our cattle. <laughs> okay. Right Just flip feed. it. So, like, But he's ha having the disciples think, which of you... Having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, you see, go and sit down to meet. So Christ making them think. He asked him a question. Which one of y'all have a servant out there plowing the field, feeding cattle, and when he come back from doing his service, you tell the servant, now sit down and eat. Well, check it out. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready, wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me. Till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou, mean that servant, shall eat and drink. See, because if servant come from doing the work, his service in the field, come back, he still got service to do to his master, right? And once he's done doing his service to his master, then he can go and do his thing. So Christ asked him the question regarding a servant. Remember, we're supposed to be the servants of the Lord. Verse 9. Did he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. I mean, Christ said no. Is the master going to be like, yeah, I want to thank you for doing what he, the, the servants are already be doing. That's his job. So us serving the most high in Christ, are we uh, to be expecting the most high to thank us? I want to thank you for keeping my commandments. I want to thank you, sister, for doing your womanly duties in the home. Thank you. You think that that's what we suspect the most high in Christ to thank us? We're serving. That's why Christ says, So likewise ye to his disciples, when you have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. For we have done that which was our duty to do. Is that a humble servant? Yeah. That's a humble servant. So Christ is teaching the disciples to be humble servants. Do your duty. To, it's, it's a commandment. It ain't something we to glorify and like, you know, yeah, most I thank me. It's the other way around. Right. We're supposed to be thanking the most high in the name of Christ. 
for the things they had done, right? It's our duty, Israel, to keep the commandments. And we talk and see, I'm a good person. I don't steal. You know, uh, 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 I keep the, we supposed to not steal. <laughs> right? Verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. So here you got Israelites that were lepers. So they had to stand far off. Why? Because lepers, they was contagious, right? They weren't clean. Can you imagine that? They had to live their life like that as a leper. Leprous. Verse 13, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. There go that word. Have mercy on us, Lord. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. You see that? Christ was like, all right, you want the mercy? Go show yourself to the Levites. That's all he told them. And they turned, went to the Levites, and whoop, healed. He just said, go show yourself to the Levites. Remember, the old, the old covenant was still in effect. So the latter part of 14, it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he had saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet. I Me mean, at Christ's feet doing what? Giving him thanks. See? Their lives changed. That was 10. What happened to one of them? But question. He, he, he testified. He, had, he cried with a loud voice, praise God, and gave thanks to Christ. He went down to his feet, fell down on his face at his feet. His thankfulness drew him closer to the Lord, didn't it? Right. His mind was like, wait a minute. Something special that's happened in my life. He went back. Praising God and giving Christ thanks. What happened in your life, Israel? Something happened in your life, right? With the most high in Christ. It was a healing. Spiritually. So what should we do? What did this brother do? Thanks. See? We don't have to be here. You understand? Some people didn't wake up today. <laughs> this the lesson. We ain't supposed to look for the most high of the Lord to, to thank us. It's the other way around. We don't read. We read it. How the most high Christ is big on appreciation, thankfulness, right? Gratitude. They're big on that. Then you see the negative attitude on that list Paul was talking about. Israel was being unthankful. Then you read about what Paul broke down. We became Gentiles in Romans 1. He said we became unthankful, right? Going after other gods. After all that the Lord did for us, we would turn our backs on. See? So 16 saying, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, an Israelite. 
that lived in Samaria. And Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? One ten of them cleansed? But where are the nine? I said, where are my other brothers at? Where are the other nine? Where they at? Goodbye, thanks, Lord. But the Lord, you healed me. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to the priest. This brother, nah, let me turn around. Show my appreciation. Say, there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. One lived in Samaria. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. See? So was it showing? What did Christ like? Faith. Thankfulness. Praise. Praise the, praise the Lord. That's right. Faith with that thankfulness. This, this man glorified God. Because Christ was doing the works of God. You see? So let's get to Ecclesiastes 17. Ecclesiastica 17, right? And 27. It says, Who shall praise the Most High in the grave? So we go to the grave, Israel. We will be praising the Most High in the grave? No. No, because it's a rap, right? Instead of them which live and give what? Thanks. 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 So while we're alive and breathing, what should we be doing? Giving thanks. There you go again. See? Verse 28. Thanksgiving perisheth from the dead. As from one that is not. See? As from one like don't exist that's dead. The living and sound in heart shall praise the Lord. See? So again, while we're alive, we can praise the Lord giving thanks. Because these scriptures before it goes into what? To the Lord. That's right. What is that called? Repentance. Okay. Who's giving or granting us repentance? The Lord. the Lord. That's right. Through the blood of Christ. See, we to be thankful. Christ went to the cross for us. To usher in that new covenant through his blood. And so Paul wrote to the Hebrews about what Christ done or did for us, but a lot of them was forsaken to assemble. They had no appreciation for the blood of Christ. So you get in the tenth chapter, who we talking about? Lord say he got fired for his adversaries that des despised the new covenant because they would be leaving the church, being worldly. So the Holy Spirit to through Paul said. Such like that, they're going to receive a sore punishment. All this we're talking about, Hebrews 10. Y'all can read that. See? So many of the Israelites was moving through persecution. They was leaving, man. In worldly. Doing despite unto the Lord. Being unthankful. <laughs> and 
And again, when we're like that, Israel, and that spirit of the devil come upon us, when we just go dark, we're going to find ourselves attacking each other, attacking the brothers and sisters in Christ, being unthankful, ungrateful, not appreciative. We keep this mind state about how the Lord giving us all the opportunity to repent. We'll see. We all make mistakes. We'll see, man. I can't be grudging. Gotta handle the situation in Christ. We lose sight of this. We let the devil play with us. We'll be a whole nother person. Right? When the Lord already told us, we're going to be hurt. Prepare for that. But then he tell us how to deal with the hurt. He give us all type of example on how to handle situations. But what we usually do, let that flesh take over. And say, I don't want to handle this. Then when, you, when it comes up later on, we, we just blow our lid. What happened to the scriptures? <laughs> Be thankful, Israel. We're not a camp. <laughs> this is a ministry. It's the body of Christ. And you brothers and sisters that's helping, the most high in Christ, know your works. We all are supposed to be laboring, doing the same thing. The classes go out for our learning. If you want to grow, you're going to grow. But the choice is yours. See? So we have to grow to get to the kingdom, Israel. There's going to be a resurrection. Remember the Sadducees, Sadducees. They didn't believe in the resurrection, so they tried to stump Christ. A question regarding marriage. How a sister had seven brothers, each one died. <laughs> Say, who wife would she be in the resurrection? First of all, Christ was addressing, they question when a person dies, where they spirit go? Back to the Father. Back to the Father. And then they, as the angels, they in spirit form. So there wouldn't be no marriage in that situation. So then he jumped into what the resurrection is. How the dead do rise. Now he's talking about his second coming. So the Sadducees, these Israelites didn't believe it. Angels or no resurrection. Christ hit him. He said, listen, there's a resurrection and there's angels. <laughs> and the angels don't marry. Then he starts talking about how the Most High is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't say they was, uh, uh, he was the Most High, was their God. He still is. Why? They coming back. So this information is found in various verses, chapters, Mark 12 being one. So if we believe in the resurrection, then what, what are we going to do in Mark 12? What do you say? The two great commandments. Because we believe in the resurrection. And we'll, we'll not be far from the kingdom. In Matthew 25, the parable what did he talk about how the saints, the sheep, going to deal with one another? They said, when saw we thee, Christ, hungry, and this, this, and that, we did it unto you. He said, nah, when you treated your brother and sister this way, you was doing it unto me. Then he started talking about the sheep getting eternal life. But the goats will get what? Everlasting fire. The way we treat each other goes far as getting us into the kingdom, brotherly and sisterly kindness. So Peter broke it down. Add to your faith, virtue, temperance, brotherly kindness. And he go in and say, if you do these things, you shall not fail. And so an entrance shall be open unto you in the kingdom of the Most High Christ. 
So all these things we talk about, it goes on our record. So right there, a whole nother class. Brotherly kindness, sisterly kindness. Basic scriptures in Israel, but we fold on those scriptures in Israel. Those be the classes we need. Got to have a faith, Israel, with the works. Like it said, what James said, faith without works is dead, being alone. <laughs> our works is supposed to go with our faith. Okay? So it's Hebrews 13. Was one of the things of charity is say charity is kind. kind. It's not in tongue. It's actions to it. That's right. But you have a lot of our people in Israel that's, that have spirits on them. Which we had on us. The Lord brought us in. Look at Mary Magdalene. How many spirits she had on her? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Seven, Israel. Seven. What about the brother that was in the tomb, cutting himself, tripping, Legion. breaking chain? She said Legion. What was that? Tell you it tell you in there it's a herd of swine. It said about two thousand swine was how many spirits was on that brother? Two thousand. So we be seeing things. We just see that hour like them spirits. There'd be a lot of spirits at work. If the Lord showed us those spirits, we probably faint. <laughs> Read those scriptures, Israel. Read them and look at the context and see what the Lord really telling us. The we just read. Oh, I got it. Nah, focus. <laughs> Christ said it by example. What's your name? Christ already knew the name of the. It, I'm Legion, for we are many. <laughs> well, why well, won't we play with them spirits, man? We get to go back into that world and be more spirits come on us. We be worse off when we were when we didn't learn to the Lord. See, shouldn't that be scary? Absolutely. So we like to tempt the Lord. Oh, Okay, yeah, bam, bam, and this, this, and that. And years go on. Uh, we try to call, they ain't returning phone call. They don't want to deal with the church. That's dangerous. Repent. That's what th this truth is about, repentance. Offenses will come. Just how do we handle them? You see? Fences come with the children. Our children's children. How do we handle them? Will it be parenting pride? Or we got to handle it right? So all the children cut up. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So you, you stick it through, Israel. Your brother, your sister. We put on the nature of the Most High in Christ. That's what we work at. Then the Lord said in Leviticus 19, Israel, be holy, for I'm the Lord am holy. Then he gave us some hol his holiness about how we not the grudge. When you see Christ walking in the streets of Jerusalem grudging. He had the nature of the Most High. That's what Peter is them saying. He also said, be holy as, 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 as is written. For your God is holy. What are Peter and them uh, uh, telling us to be like? Christ -like. Yeah, the Most High in Christ. Like. The way we go in the parables about forgiveness. Being merciful. Because that's how the Most High in Christ is. We can lose sight of that. We can lose sight of it. 
Because our feelings get into that flesh. So, the Lord have us throwing a lot of stuff out there at you brothers and sisters. That's right. I <laughs> mean, those are things we want to meditate on also, right? Right. All praises. So, Hebrews 13. Well, this is spiritual right here. This Paul, Hebrews 13 and 15. This, this is all I got, my brother. Hebrews 13 and 15. Now, there's more. Hebrews 13 and 15. It says, by him, meaning by Christ. Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. So we don't deal with animal sacrifice no more, Israel, right? right. So under the new covenant, what's the sacrifice? What's Praise. the offering? Praise, God. Praise to the Most High, right? Mm -hmm. Continually. See that? That is, so Paul going to explain it himself. The fruit of our lips Look what we offer. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks to the Most High's power and authority. This is the fruit now that we're offering up. So is it spiritual? Absolutely. We ain't dealing with animal sacrifice. Fruit offerings and all that. No, the fruit <laughs> is us giving thanks to the Most High in the name of Christ. Just meditate again on where you were at and where, how has the Lord been working in your life. In our lows, in our highs, Lord been there. We would be like, where are you, Lord? <laughs> like, look, you're always teaching us something. There's a lot of distractions. But he'd be with us teaching us. We just got to stay in. He'd say, by word, he said, I'll never forsake thee. Let your heart be, not with, be without covet, covetousness. You see? So, Lord, give us the scriptures to help us in our ups and downs, our lows. Times we we, we, we going to go through sicknesses. Uh, like, why is James written? Right. We lose sight of that? James says, say, James 1 and 1. Who James writing to? 12 tribes. 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. And then what he say in James 5? Is any afflicted, let him pray. Wait a minute. Is any afflicted? What's, what's the affliction? Don't make mention, but it could be most. It could be various things. There we go. Because they didn't name them. Right. I'm going to read this real quick. James 5 and 13. Is any among you, what's the you? 12 tribes. 12 tribes. Afflicted? Let them pray. So these will be the members, right, in the Lord. Right. But affliction will come their way. So in our affliction... There's various afflictions, what we should be doing. Praying. Praying. Is any merry? Let them sing psalms. Mm. So it'll be ups and downs for the believers in the church. At time we'll be merry, mm -hmm. singing psalms. Time there'll be afflictions, we'll pray. Verse 14, is any sick among you? 
What's the sickness? It could be it various. It, hmm? it could be various. It don't make mention of it. See? We have brothers and sisters in the body of Christ going through various afflictions and sicknesses. But it tell us, if any is sick among you, let him call for the elders of the what? Church. Church. Or camp. Church. church. Booyah. <laughs> Who is the church? The body. Twelve members. tribes of Israel. Would you say, brother? Twelve tribes of Israel. Because that a letter he write to, he write to the church, and who James is spelling it out? Who the church is? Twelve tribes scattered Okay, so we ain't trying to hear no replacement theory, none of that. The church <laughs> is the elect of Israel. That just been proven right there. The church replaced Israel. What are you talking about? Gentiles being actual Gentiles being saved, you busted. Wait, the Lord ain't talking about that. So in the church, Israel, would there be afflictions? Yes. Would there be sicknesses? Yes. Would you have elders in the church? Yes. We just read it. We reading it. But we can be disrespectful. Losing sight of things. You got some Israelites teach that there's no elders in the church. That just blew them up right there, their doctrine. And they're highly emotional type of brothers. <laughs> get hurt and then want to split and separate and then teach doctrines like, if thy right hand offend me, cut it off. So what that mean, brother? Well, that eye and right hand, that's members. Now, I is an elder because he's the overseer. So if they offend you all that, cut them off. Oh. And that's oh. why you had the splits with Atlanta Church and uh, Boston. All cut, wrong breakdown, wrong doctrine. They doing their thing and they say there's no elders. <laughs> this is why the Lord showed us when brothers and sisters are out of order, we'll see it. Because you're disrespectful, stop. Stop. It shows our lack of understanding. We quote scriptures. You know, it was real good at quoting scriptures, brother. They give you 500 notes of scriptures, all twisted. <laughs> And then get upset when you try to explain the scripture. Who does brother think he is? So what does it mean, brother? Then that it come to attitude. Just say, bro, listen, man. We spoke about this scripture here. We talked. You know, we gotta drop names and all that. So then you, oh, oh, if a brother said it, this brother said, oh, it must be right. Come on, man. <laughs> be thankful, Israel. So it's saying, let them pray over him. All oh, praises. Anointed him with the oil in the name of the Lord, meaning the power and authority of Christ. So that's why we do the anointing. Right? All oh, praises. Because it's, it's, it's a commandment. Say, in the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So when we pray, we have to have the faith, man. Prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. So who does the raising up from our infirmities and sicknesses? The Lord. the Lord. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The Lord is merciful. Lord, show us our faults. We pray, repent. Lord, forgive us. Confess your faults one to another. See what we should be doing? Confessing your faults right. one to another. And pray one for another that you may be healed. So what do brothers be doing after the service? Praying one for another. Right. Don't they come out? Absolutely. So why would we be hating the congregation but praying for the congregation that the Lord heal them through the Spirit? Come on, man. 
That's your brother and sister thinking about others. Read it. <laughs> So that's deep, man. Prayer is deep. Us being thankful, that's deep. Say we, uh, we know different from Elijah. Mm. Did Elijah have infirmities? Yes. Tell us, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Meaning? He was capable of being here with elements. Speak up so they can hear you, Jay. He was capable of being hit with ailments and all sorts of stuff, just like us. Yeah, he was hit with all type of things. He went through a lot of stuff. Read about the life of Elijah. But he prayed, and his prayer was so powerful, the Lord heard his prayer and brought in a famine. So what is James exhorting us to do? Pray. Pray. You're just like Elijah. He sinned. Things befell him. Things don't befall us. But pray. So he gave the example. See how Elijah prayed to what the Lord do in this time? Heard him. So don't get in the mind saying, well, I'm going to be sinning Israel. You know, Lord ain't going to hear my prayer. Pray. Ask the Lord to help you. <laughs> pray and pray and pray. That's right. That's what it's saying. And you have other believers praying for your the brother, sister, mother, everything, father. Pray, pray, pray. What does Satan want us to do? Give up. Ain't nothing happening. Uh -huh. so stop praying. Why pray? See how we be sad. Why pray? Because the scriptures say pray. Sister, yeah. brother. What does the scriptures tell and exhorting us to do? Pray. That's it. There's a living God, Israel. When your brother Toby went through things, and Sarah, they lived in two different places. But did they pray to the same God? Yep. yep. The same God. And the same God through the Christ was sent the angel to heal them. Both of them were about what? Prayer. So guess when Sarah met her best friend, her lover, her husband, what did they do when they came together? Pray. 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 But that time she let who take the lead? Man. That man. She was in order. When she didn't have a man, she prayed by herself. <laughs> When she got that man, go ahead, honey. Take it off. Pray. I'm right with you. And you finish the prayer, amen. <laughs> and they were thankful, right? Right. So think about a lot of that, Israel. Thankfulness. So that's all I, I had right there. We usually talk afterwards anyway. <laughs> all right, scans. Is everybody clear? You serve the living God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is what? Two, what you say? One Lord. Good to see all the children here. Ready? What day is it? Josiah, what's today? Huh? What's today? New moon. Who else says something back there? I heard them. Where are you at? Matt, 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 Matt. What was today? You said what? Come on up here, man. I, I, we can't hear you. Come on. The best dancer in Israel right there. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hezekiah, come on up here. All you young brothers, man. Come on, Daniel. This seven-day Sabbath. Seven-day Sabbath, that's right. What else? And it's a new moon. 
And it's the what, Hezekiah? The new moon. The new moon. What's up, Daniel? Yeah. You ready? What's today? The seventh day seven. That's right. How old are you? Seven. You seven? Wow. And it's the seventh day seven. Day. Yep. New moon. And the new. what? New moon. New moon. That's right. My Seven young brother. Let's go. All right. All praises to the Most High Christ. I got y'all notes. Oh. That's coming up. <laughs> you ready, for fellowship? Let's fellowship. All right, Israel. Peace and blessings to your home. My brother Sabaria right here. <laughs> St. John 7? Yeah, St. John 7. About the Oh. I heard it. I'm listening to it. Oh, you're talking Mark 12. Mark, no, St. Yeah, that's Mark. I thought it was 7. Mark 12. They could do that. I said, I said, wow, I said, 
And I had my body here first. And he was like, you switch this, you know what? He put his out. So you know what? Yeah, you put my number. Yeah, right? Yes, sir. Right. 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 <laughs> the Lord doing? Yeah, he so, he he know that he know spirit. Know he 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 like, Everybody here? All right, here we go. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Everybody here? No? Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank thee in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this wine, this bread that represents the body and blood of our Lord and Savior down on the cross for the sins of Israel. Christ, let me pray good thanks. Amen. 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 I want to say this Israel real quick. Well, the people, they made us new keys for the bathroom, so we got to take care of those keys. Please. You know, uh, there's something happened where a guy found the key in the bathroom over here, and I don't know how it happened. Or what a man doing over that way. But you got to be mindful of those keys there. All right? So I just want to say that. All praise. All right.